thermoregulation. Thermoregulation, the meaning of thermoregulation is to control the body's temperature. The hypothalamus has the ability to control the body's temperature. And I want to give you a few examples here. The first one is related to when we get sick, when we have a fever. Our body, the temperature of our body rises when we have a virus, for example, we get infected by a virus, we get a fever, our body, our hypothalamus is making our body hotter. And it's doing that for very good reasons. When our body temperature is higher, it is harder for viruses to spread. It's easier for our immune system, Miani Shi Tong, to kill or to destroy and to remove these viruses from our body. So our body makes us hotter because it's trying to save us. Another example here is when our body is trying to cool us down. Let's say for example we're doing some exercise and we're, we're, we're really doing some work with our muscles, we're moving, we're running. Or maybe for example we're in a very hot room or in a hot city or a hot country. Our body temperature rises and our hypothalamus realizes, wait, wait, the, the temperature is too high. I want to maintain a certain temperature, 36.7 to about 37. But if it goes over that, I need to cool down. I don't want it to be this hot. And what the hypothalamus will do is it will instruct our pores, let's say our body, to, we call it vasodilate. To vasodilate means to open the pores. We have these, we have millions and millions of pores in our skin. And vasodilation is the opening of these pores so that we can release water or sweat. Because when we have sweat, when we have water on the surface of our skin, when the air hits the water, it makes our skin feel cooler. And this helps us to bring our body temperature down. Irene. And Another example here is how one of these subpersonalities can call another subpersonality and they can be used together. 
Let's say, for example, I feel cold. I'm in a room and the air conditioner is running and I feel cold. If my body, so what will happen is, my body will do first, it will try to do vasoconstriction, which means that it will close all of the pores to try and make sure that I can hold more of the heat inside my body and blood will move from my hands and from my feet up into this area, into the area of my heart and my lungs and my belly, because these are the important organs. It needs to make sure that the temperature here is warm enough. But so, so this will, and, and this is a good, a good way of conserving heat. But if the room is still very cold, it might call up another function. It might call up the explore function. It might say, look, I need to go and find something warm to wear. Maybe I need to find a sweater or I need to find more clothes. I need to find a blanket, I need to find something that will help me to conserve more of my heat because this is not enough. Just closing my pores is not enough. I still keep losing more heat. Maybe I need to find a hat to wear because I'm losing heat from my head or my face. Another example is if I'm feeling hot and I keep losing water. Another explore, it might, it might call up the explore function to go and find water. I need to drink more water to replenish the water in my body because I've lost some. I've lost too much. Irene. Uh, Demoregulation,不知道怎么念。这一个,那个,呃,这种是,就是它会调控你身体的温度嘛。所以当你比方说你在一个很冷的房间里,然后空调非常冷。然后这时候首先你身上的毛孔会闭合。以免更多的热量从毛孔中散失然后另外就是你的血液会从你的手脚上转移就是它不会再在你的手脚上待着它会流向你的心脏你的内脏那些地方因为那些地方是比较重要的它必须确保它们处在一个温暖的环境里但如
Because if I take a warm shower or a hot shower, I'm heating my body up. So how am I going to fall asleep if I need to cool down? What happens here when people take a hot shower? Remember, I was talking about vasodilation and vasoconstriction earlier, meaning the opening of the pores and the closing of the pores. So when we take a hot shower, our body temperature rises. And this forces us, this forces our hypothalamus to make our pores open. It forces vasodilation. We open the pores because we need to let go of the excess heat. So I take the hot shower and then when I leave the bathroom, all of my pores are open because remember that I have just raised my body temperature. And now as I leave the bathroom, my body is trying to let go of the excess heat by opening my pores. It takes 5, 10, 15, 20. It often will take 20 to 30 minutes for my body to let go of the excess heat, to cool down. And what happens is while I'm cooling down, after I take the hot shower, within 30 minutes, I start cooling, 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 cooling. And I get to that cool enough temperature so that when I go to bed, I can easily fall asleep. So taking the hot shower one last time opens my pores so that I can cool down after 30 minutes. But another way, and this is my preferred way of, of preparing my body to fall asleep, is I don't take a hot shower. I like to take a cold shower. I will take a nice cold shower to bring my body temperature down immediately by myself. So it doesn't take me that 20, 30, 40 minutes to lose the heat before I go to sleep. I am taking the cold shower so that I can cool my body down and then I can immediately go to sleep. And I fall asleep within five minutes because my body temperature is already low enough. Irene. Uh 去调整你身体的温度然后当你洗完之后你出来他自己喜欢的一种方式是他不洗热水澡但是如果你洗个热水澡 你可能就要30分钟这样 Alright Thank you Irene